for those one semi-final down one to go and this is one we didn't see coming i didn't at least south africa beating australia and how built on that innings by annika bosch tell me all about it well, first of all, I just want to say that I was one of the people that said Annika Bosch shouldn't be in the team. So clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about. But she'd had a nasty World Cup. She didn't look like she was getting the ball away cleanly. Marizan Cup was being battered at number four, which I think is a place too low. And Annika Bosch hasn't really been a regular established member of the side. And then out of nowhere, not only does she come up with the career best innings, she wins the game for South Africa. And she hits boundaries where Australia couldn't. So she's hitting the ball cleanly, striking it really hard. And what really impressed me about her is that kind of short arm pull. So she's not hitting it so far that it's giving a catching opportunity, but just enough to be able to get the runs. And the level of confidence, the self-belief, the work she's been doing with the batting coach, Bakir Abrahams, it all just came together in this wonderful way. And I thought it would happen because I actually wore your green scarf to the game today. And I'm just, for South Africa, this is so special. Absolutely. And on an Australian side of things, this was not the Australia we're used to seeing. They got really bogged down from the outset batting. They just couldn't seem to get themselves going. Um, as soon as Lise Perry came out, then she got things moving a little bit. And there was a lovely cameo from Phoebe Litchfield, but it was a little bit too late all around Beth Mooney, who made, sort of, she was again in the 40s, which is how she started the tournament. There were wickets falling around her, so she couldn't really, you know, get going. She just kind of had to hold it together. And we're not used to seeing Australia on the defensive like that. Then come the bowling performance, they've got to defend 134. They would have backed themselves to do that, but their bowlers just couldn't execute in the face of a really confident, on form South Africa side. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, you talk about Australia's batting and we all thought 160, 170 on this pitch. And maybe we're forgetting how well South Africa bowled to keep them to 134 because it's not like they bowled them out. So actually Australia are going to look back and say 134 for five could have been 145 for nine or something like that, right? And it was Nonkurile Kumalaba didn't have a good night, so South Africa had to rely on other contributions. Ayabonga Kaka, I think, was excellent. She's very difficult to get away. She's a line and length bowler, stump to stump. You know, she doesn't look very expressive. It's not the sexiest thing you're going to see, but it's very effective. Marizan Cup was a little bit expensive, but together and collectively, South Africa had just enough. Their fielding was pretty good without being excellent. Their bowling was, again, like, fairly good and Australia batted too turgidly I think in places but they're batting South Africa's batting South Africa in a chase at a World Cup we all tend to know what happens I mean I'm just thinking about June but uh, and that's the men's World Cup by the way but their batting was just completely on fire Laura Wolfart I think we underestimate the calm that she brings to the side and just to see you know they didn't even need Marizan Cup in the end which that's saying a lot for South Africa so they are into a second World Cup final. It's the second successive one for the woman. It's a third successive T20 World Cup final. And I'm just saying you can't keep doing the same thing with the same results. Absolutely. Well, we're going to find out who they meet very soon and we'll be back to tell you all about that soon.